Hello, and welcome to Flying Failures, where we'll be looking at the Lavochkin Lag 3. Built as a rapid answer to the rise of Nazi aggression against the Soviet Union, the Lag 3 was designed in the face of crippling resource shortages within the Soviet aircraft industry, and thus employed a revolutionary wood based design that initially showed promise with the original prototype. However, the translation into production variants proved to result in one of the worst fighters ever employed during World War II. With its heavy, sluggish underpinnings, combined with rampant unreliability and troublesome frontline maintenance, rendering the Lag 3, in the face of far superior Luftwaffe opponents, nothing more than flying cannon fodder. The development of the Lavochkin Gubanov Gudkov Lag 3 stemmed directly from the Soviet Union's growing awareness in the late 1930s that it lacked sufficient numbers of modern fighter aircraft to counter the rapidly rearming Luftwaffe. With this realization coinciding with a deeper structural issue within the Soviet industrial base, including the production of lightweight aluminium and other non-ferrous metals lagging far behind the demands of an expanding aviation program. Soviet industry, already stretched by the demands of Stalin's rapid militarization efforts, simply could not produce enough of the critical alloys needed for an advanced all-metal airframe, and as a result, Soviet designers were forced to think laterally and adapt by using alternative construction methods and materials. In this climate of urgency and constraint, Design work began in 1939 on a new fighter aircraft under the direction of Semyon Lavochkin, Vladimir Gubanov, and Mikhail Gudkov, with their solution being the I-301 prototype, an aircraft constructed predominantly from an innovative laminated wood product known as Delta Wood. With this material, essentially thin veneers of birch or pine bonded together with a synthetic resin and then hardened under heat and pressure, offering surprisingly high tensile strength, decent durability, and was both rot-resistant and fire-retardant. And crucially, it could be produced without drawing on the overstretched reserves of light alloys, making it a pragmatic choice for wartime production. The I-301 first took to the skies in March 1940, and in its initial test flights, the prototype performed competently, being relatively quick, handling reasonably well, and packing a punch with its armament of one 23mm cannon mounted between the engine cylinders and multiple heavy machine guns, giving it a firepower advantage over many contemporary Soviet fighters. However, from the outset, the aircraft's mass posed a challenge, with Delta Wood, though strong, being heavier than aluminium, and the addition of combat equipment and weaponry only compounded the problem, while the Klimov M105P engine, based on a licensed French hispano suiza design, was pushed to its limits trying to propel the heavy airframe. By June 14, 1940, the aircraft had completed state trials, reaching a top speed of 375 miles an hour at altitude, and demonstrating strong climbing ability, achieving 16,000 feet in under six minutes, and was thus approved for serial production under the new designation of Lag 3 on June 29th of the same year, employing the same semi-monocoque fuselage covered in plywood and wings built around twin spars, while its construction bore similarities to the Yak-1 and MiG-1, but stood apart through its almost exclusive use of wood. The Klimov M105P inline V12 engine, meanwhile, produced 1,050 horsepower, and was coupled with a two-stage, two-speed supercharger that drove a three-bladed, constant-speed propeller, while the aircraft's initial armament configuration featured an MP6 23mm autocannon firing through the propeller hub, flanked by two 12.7mm Barrettes in UBS heavy machine guns mounted in the cowling, and although the MP6 offered formidable firepower, its powerful recoil damaged engine mounts, and it was subsequently replaced in the production models. As development progressed, range extension became a key requirement, leading to the addition of larger fuel tanks, increasing capacity from 340 to 450 litres, and while this allowed the aircraft to meet a range target of 621 miles, it also pushed the weight past optimal limits. The transition from the prototype to full-scale production was beset with serious complications that significantly altered the aircraft's performance and reputation, as while the I-301 prototype had demonstrated promising capabilities during initial testing, the leap to series production saw a dramatic and unwelcome drop in performance. The production model was notably slower, largely as a result of increased weight stemming from added fuel tanks, reinforced components, and the extra equipment necessary to meet revised specifications, with this weight gain negatively impacting its climb rate, ceiling, and maneuverability, while the Klimov M105P engine, though adequate in theory, often failed to perform reliably in practice due to inefficient cooling and production inconsistencies. As production ramped up in late 1940 and early 1941, Reports from frontline units revealed a range of technical and operational issues, with pilots frequently encountering hydraulic system malfunctions, persistent oil leaks, and chronic engine overheating, 
especially during winter operations, where the lack of antifreeze required hot water to be poured into the engine before every flight. The Lag-3 was also unpopular due to its handling characteristics, with pilots finding it sluggish in response to control inputs, especially in the roll axis, and pulling out of dives required excessive force, with the aircraft having a dangerous tendency to enter uncontrollable spins if pushed too hard during maneuvers, with combat seeing these flaws prove fatal. The laminated wooden construction, touted as an innovation due to its resistance to rotten fire, presented its own problems, as while the structure did not ignite easily, it lacked the shock-absorbing properties of metal and often splintered when hit by explosive rounds, with this vulnerability leading to the grim nickname among Soviet pilots as the Lakaravani Garantiravani Grob, or Guaranteed Varnish Coffin. Mounting concerns led to urgent action, and by February 1941, in response to pilot feedback and mechanical reports, the Lavochkin Design Bureau was compelled to implement a staggering 2,228 modifications across the production line, with these changes targeting everything from the aircraft's weight distribution and armament configuration to flight control surfaces and engine installation. Weight reduction was pursued through refined manufacturing processes and the elimination of non-essential equipment, while changes to the aerodynamics aimed to salvage some of the aircraft's lost agility with these improvements being phased in across successive production series, each incorporating lessons learned from frontline use. The fourth series featured a new Klimov M105PA engine rated at 1,200 horsepower, the replacement of the Axial Beretsim with a 20mm Schwack cannon, deletion of one Cal machine gun, and refined engine intakes, while to compensate for weight, fuel capacity was reduced, sacrificing range for modest performance gains. The 8 Series standardized the Schwack Cannon and a single Barretts in UBS, removing the two 7.62mm Shax machine guns, which were considered ineffective against modern aircraft, while the 11th Series repurposed the Lag-3 for ground attack rolls, adding hardpoints for bombs and rockets, and offering optional ski landing gear for winter operations. The 23rd Series introduced a horn-balanced rudder which improved handling, and a revised radio antenna configuration, though by this point, Several factories had begun transitioning to the Yak-1 and Yak-7, whose lighter, more maneuverable airframes made them more favorable in combat. Nevertheless, the Lag-3 remained in development, with the 29th series debuting the M105PF engine, producing 1,260 horsepower, and optimized for low to medium altitudes where most Eastern Front air combat occurred, with this upgrade bringing the Lag-3's top speed up to 350 miles an hour and improved climb rates. The 33rd series adopted a new Vish 105SV propeller with a larger spinner, and the 34th series attempted to convert the fighter into an anti-tank platform by mounting a 37mm NS-37 cannon, though the weapon's weight and recoil compromised the aircraft's balance and structural integrity, while the 35th series added aerodynamic improvements, including automatic leading-edge slats for better low-speed control, a retractable tail wheel, and an upgraded radiator. The final production variant, the 66th series, appeared in spring 1943 and continued until mid-1944, with this version being 175 kilograms lighter than earlier models and featured an aerodynamically improved canopy, four exhaust stacks, a new oil cooler, and a shortened antenna, achieving a top speed of 367 miles an hour and was the most agile and best climbing of the Lag-3 lineage, though even at its peak, it struggled to match contemporary German fighters such as the Messerschmitt Bf-109 and Focke-Wulf FW-190. Experimental development also ran in parallel to the main production line, with one Lag-3 being fitted with a Klimov VK-107 engine rated at 1300 horsepower, but persistent overheating made the configuration unviable, while another prototype, the Goodkov GU-82, tested the Shvetsov M82 radial engine, which ultimately became the basis for the successful LA-5 series. The K-37, designated for anti-tank missions, featured a powerful Shiplanti SH-37 cannon, capable of destroying enemy fighters with a single hit, though only 20 units were built due to handling difficulties, while the Gorbanov 105 variant, tested in October 1943, introduced major aerodynamic refinements and a reduced weight profile, allowing for a top speed of 384 miles an hour and improved maneuverability, while the follow-up model, the 105-2, incorporated a more powerful engine and heavier armament, but underperformed due to cooling issues and disappointing climb rates, and it was eventually abandoned in favour of newer designs. In service, the Lag-3 first saw combat in July 1941, shortly after the outbreak of Operation Barbarossa, Germany's invasion of the Soviet Union, and it quickly became clear that, while the Lag-3 could adequately engage enemy bombers, it was unsuited to dogfighting against more advanced German fighters, 
particularly the Messerschmitt BF-109F. Its performance shortcomings were magnified in combat, with the aircraft being underpowered, slow to respond to pilot input, and unstable during high-speed maneuvers. And pilots found it heavy and unyielding, particularly during turns and dives, with a tendency to spin if not handled carefully, while maintenance was also problematic, with the water-cooled engine requiring considerable effort to prepare for flight in freezing weather. Ultimately, testing in 1944 concluded that the aircraft was inferior in combat performance to both Soviet and German contemporaries, and by the middle of that year, the Soviet Air Force considered the Lag-3 obsolete, and all production was halted, with Factory 31 in Tbilisi, the last remaining production line, transitioning to manufacturing the Yakovlev Yak-3. Outside the Soviet Union, the Lag-3 saw limited use, with three examples being captured and operated by the Finnish Air Force, where they were used primarily for bomber interception, with one Finnish pilot, Warrant Officer Eno Koskinen, achieving a confirmed aerial kill in a captured Lag-3 on February 16, 1944, while the Luftwaffe also tested several captured aircraft and used one in a propaganda film in 1943. And in the Far East, a defector flew a Lag-3 into Japanese-held territory in Manchukuo, where it was subsequently evaluated by the Imperial Japanese Army Air Service. Between 1941 and 1944, a total of 6,528 Lag-3 aircraft were built, and although it filled a critical gap during the early war years and played a role in the Soviet air defense effort, it was never able to fully meet the expectations set for it. In hindsight, the Lag-3 occupies a curious position in Soviet aviation history, representing an innovative approach to wartime aircraft design by making extensive use of non-strategic metals such as Delta Wood in order to sustain mass production though its performance fell short of even basic demands, and it never fully recovered from its early reputation for poor handling and unreliable systems. Despite these shortcomings, the Lag-3 played an essential role during a critical period of the war, providing a foundation upon which more successful designs, particularly the LA-5 and LA-7, were based, and its operational legacy is thus mixed, being a flawed but necessary step in the rapid wartime evolution of Soviet fighter aviation.